Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having a great start to the week. Uh, I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but this is definitely something that needs to be addressed. As I stated on yesterday, um, we are definitely pushing in this fundraiser. Um, and it's interesting what I'm going to talk about, too, but we're pushing in this fundraiser. Look, if you believe in the work we're doing, if you look back over the last 15 years on social media and 30 years in general and see the work we've done in research and program development and acute community involvement, legal advocacy and mental health and all of the other things that we consistently continually to do and I, uh, me giving giving of myself and you believe in us we need your support we need you to go click the button and give uh in the last month i've been pushing and talking about uh support uh we've got one person and i said i was going to do an honorable mention um and i want to find her her name so i'm sc sorry give me a second I really do apologize, but of course it won't pull up. There we go. Uh, Nisi Phillips, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right because it's spelled a little uniquely. Uh, but Nisi Phillips, we want to thank you for showing your support. That's the one gift over the last month that I am aware of. But we definitely thank you for your support. Um, now, this isn't about that, but it definitely ties into it. Uh, we're off code. I can't tell you how badly we're off code. And it shows up in situations like this. Um, but um, Daniel Penny is the guy who choked out Mr. Neely um, on the train, the F train in New York, held him in a chokehold for 15 minutes. Anybody that understands anything about chokeholds knows that in, within 30 seconds you can render a person unconscious at that, per, at that point. If they were a threat, they're no longer a threat. You got time to tie them up. You got time, a bunch of time to do other things. 30 seconds is what it takes the average person to pass out when you put an a, a, a adequate chokehold on them. Uh, that chokehold was held for 15 minutes. Uh, long after the the person had been subdued and there were multiple people he was not a threat he was not armed and he was outnumbered um, yet he's dead and initially it looked as if Daniel Penny was going to walk but then that was a push uh, and this is interesting and this is what I want to talk about when I'm talking about getting on code there was a push for him to be held accountable in, it, in the uh, district attorney decided to say, okay, we'll present it to a grand jury and let them decide. The grand jury decided that at the very least he should be uh, charged with manslaughter, even if it's involuntary manslaughter, because his actions led directly to the death of another person. Uh, even if it was neglectful and not intentional, it happened. Um, his life was not in jeopardy at the time he did it. Uh, the person was not in his personal space or the space of anyone else. He was being belligerent. He was being loud. But if you've been in New York and you've rode on the train, that isn't uh, anything unusual. That shouldn't spook the average person. So the idea that this was happening was, to me, it seems like an opportunity for him to do something he had been wanting to do. Uh, and I'm just obviously speculating, but I'm speculating from an education, from an educated perspective of studying and learning and watching over the years how this stuff goes down. You have people who are literally looking for an opportunity to exercise a sense of power that they've never experienced, and this was his opportunity. Um, that that the th fact that he's charged isn't the isn't the issue here. The issue is. The moment that he was charged, the moment that charges were brought, they opened up a account with Give, Send, Go. Remember, because of Darren Wilson, who raised over half a million on GoFundMe before GoFundMe felt the pressure of it. And they stopped basically allowing people who were charged with a violent crime to raise money on their site. We have a site called Give, Send, Go. 
and that's the site they're using. Now, what's interesting about Give, Send, Go is it's advertised as a Christian, uh, Christian, uh, free Christian fundraising site. Uh, but this guy who is on camera choking out a homeless and mentally ill person to the point of death has been given an opportunity to raise money. Now, here's the thing. Within 48 hours, they have uh, raised $1 million for a defense fund for this guy. Now, this is not a $1 million case, but what it means is a lot of money can be poured into muddying the waters, delaying uh, cases, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But the bottom line isn't that. It's that white people rallied around him. They, they, but it started in the media. It started with the way they were going to frame him. Marine, uh, you, you know, all these things. The bottom line is I don't care who does something wrong. It doesn't change that the action is wrong. Now, you can look at a person's past and say, okay, this is a mitigating circumstance, but we still must call it wrong and we must deal with it. Whether he ends up serving time on probation we need to sit up and take it through the system and he needs to answer for what he did i think personally he needs to do time i, I you know the thing is number one i've been saying it for years we've got to start putting consequences on on the taking of black life not just by white people either i mean by blacks there has to be a consequence that adds value to the life there has to be a price you you will pay for taking a black life to the point that people start to value it if nothing more than to sit up and say i don't want to smoke as long as all we do is whine and complain there's a problem i've been talking about this for years but you have to have economic power in order to sit up and be able to deliver blows uh, in response to things that you're unhappy with. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it says donations for Daniel Penny's legal defense fund have reached over $1 million in less than 48 hours. Uh, the article that I read says thousands of donors raced to the aid of Marine, again, Marine, Daniel Penny, Saturday, uh, as a fund for his legal defense surpassed 1 million, a tsunami of support so massive it swamped the hosting website and disabled it for more than an hour. Now, here's the hosting website, Give, Send, Go, a Christian fundraising site, says, that was a big surge in traffic and our servers were temporarily overwhelmed, Jacob West, the co-founder of the giving platform, Give, Send, Go, told the post. The bottom line is they're on code their own code this isn't the first time this happens it happens all the time but this broke the record for darren wilson darren wilson took a while to get to half a mil but he got to half a mil before gofundme shut him down and then they went somewhere else and created a fund to continue to raise money and i was told that over a 90 day to a little over 90 day period he raised a million this guy has done it in 48 hours um now, here's the thing. They can raise $1 million to defend him. But I guarantee you 85% of those people who gave have never given anything towards helping the mentally ill or the homeless. A, a situation that created the entire thing. Um, this wasn't some raid, enraged, irrational person who had a bad day came on the train and decided I'm going to kill somebody. This is a ranting and raving mentally ill person who's homeless and they do this and people who are around them consistently know this and you have the ability to get up and get off the train if you're uncomfortable or call um, uh, a trans uh, a, a transportation officer somebody to come deal with uh, the level of discomfort you're dealing with but the fact that you took it upon yourself to choke the life out of this person and let me tell you something the very thing that he's being celebrated for and the cloak that they're placing over him marine says that he knew better as a marine you're trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat you're trained more extensively than any other basic unit you know 
you're as close as a Marine to Special Forces as you can get as a basic unit, a basic uh, uh, operating unit. Marines are considered the best of the best. So he knows what it takes to choke someone out and he knows what it takes to kill someone. He has a level of responsibility. He, he, he broke rules of engagement that he couldn't even uh, have done in an environment in a hostile situation when he was on tour. When he was doing his tour of duty, there are rules of engagement. They say when you can use force against someone outside of your, 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 your unit. And he broke rules of engagement. This was somebody acting erratic but did not deserve to die. And that's the thing that nobody's looking at. Well, they're looking at it, but they're going to cloak it. And then they're going to cloak it under patriotism. They're going to cloak it under he served his country. You got a bunch of people who served their country in prison that look like me. And there's some that look like, look white in other places. We're going to act like all of a sudden we do well by our, our uh, veterans. No, we don't. We treat our veterans like crap. But all of a sudden, you know, it, his, his, his stint in the Marines, which couldn't have been long. He's early 20s. And I wonder if we look at his record in the Marines, could he cut it? Because his behavior says probably not. He's still trying to find himself, still trying to prove himself. But my thing is, they're on code. We're not. Uh, and, and yes, I'm going to use this situation from the fundraiser as an example. We have answers. We have services actually for Mr. Uh, calm down, Rick. I get a little hot. Uh, we have services for mentally ill. We have services for the homeless. We have services for domestic uh, abuse. We have services for childhood sexual abuse. We have a rite of passage initiative for young black males. We uh, are constantly functioning in legal advocacy. Because, see, if that had been the other way around, that wasn't going to be a million dollars raised for that black guy who killed the white guy. So then guess what? I get called. The only time we see major moves is when one of us has been murdered. Now, um, it's interesting. I haven't seen uh, Lee Merritt or Ben Crump. Maybe they're going to show up, maybe not. But when they show up, they're showing up to settle, which I have a problem with. Settling gets money, but settling does not attack the problem. Why? What we need as a group is a consistent trail of documented aggressions that violate our not civil rights, but human rights. Therefore, we can now go before an international body and saying this is what's happening to us in this day and age in what is supposed to be the industrial leader of the world. That's power. That is leverage. But when you don't get it put on record because it's now considered um, a non part of a non-disclosure agreement within signing for the money, yeah, you, you get the family paid. And I'm pretty sure the family and the family deserves to be compensated. I think that that's one way that we respond to aggression is we hit them in their pockets. But that can't be uh, the only thing, because if all we get is the money, then we basically are at a point where they are buying our lives. They're saying, OK, we took we yeah, it wasn't right. You know, here, take this, go somewhere and sit down and be quiet. You can't talk to anybody. You can't say anything negative about the case. You can't disclose X, Y, Z. But when you sit up and say, no, we're going to trial, and now you start disposing, and you're putting those depositions on record, that's a part of a record. That's part of a sworn statement. That's now on record. That can be carried as evidence on a much grander scale. Look, this happened this year. This happened this year. This happened this year. And you can see the trend of how things are going in here and how it lines up across the board with whites, blacks, you know, um, in, 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 in um, 
in level of prevalence. And so I have a problem with that, but we're not on code. You can't tell me that the average person can't look at that and think something's wrong with it. But it, what it does tell you is the media has done a very good job of how it's painting black men. What it does tell you is they would rather see a white man get away with murder than to think of an idea of a black man being the cause of a white man going to prison. Literally, that's what it is. We are not going to let this white guy go to prison for killing a black man. And they've done this consistently. This isn't the first time. This is the most intense I've seen, though. I've, I've seen some money raised when um, Walter Scott was killed in South Carolina. I saw uh, that officer get a pretty nice chunk, but nowhere close to what we're seeing right now in less than 48 hours. They're just on code. The media sets the stage. Marine, 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 uh, belligerent, slanging stuff, blah, blah, blah. And it's a black guy who he, you know, I mean, this guy is so slight in stature that short of wielding some kind of weapon, he could have been easily subdued by the number of people on the train without choking him up. Uh, but even if you're going to use a chokehold, once you subdue somebody and you render them unconscious, at that moment, you have to let them go. Because once they're unconscious, you have no other warning at what point they're approaching death and brain damage and all the other things that comes with cutting off oxygen, oxygen supply to the brain. Now, of course, this being a Marine, he knew that. But yet, what happens? Initially, they're making excuses for him, and he looks like he's going to walk, but the pressure came, and the it was pretty much political that the, the case had to be brought before a grand jury. Well, when you bring it before a grand jury, there are certain rules, and then it's not the same as a regular jury. They don't have to say that he's guilty. They just have to say that there's a possibility that a, uh, a jury can find him guilty, and then there's a, a reason for an indictment. He's got to now prove or at least challenge the state to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did something wrong. Now, if that happens, that happens. Uh, and I've seen guilty people get off. We saw that in the Rodney King verdict. It's not the first time we saw it. We've seen it a lot with police, but it happens. But the thing is, the first thing is to get him in the courtroom. Now that we've got him headed to the courtroom, this is their response. This is important for a number of different reasons. Number one is we're not on code. We can't support anything black to save our lives. that's not the only thing the other thing is we need to understand that this post-racial america rhetoric that they keep throwing at us is crap we're seeing it in 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 in, in living color that we respond to things based on race period and i'm not mad at them they're doing what they do I think that we need to stop being mad at them for doing what they do and learn how to do it for our own. I mean, one million in 48 hours. You've got an organization that has served you for 30 years and get one donation a month. But there's a consistent flow of requests for services. So obviously there are people that know we serve because we keep getting requests. We keep getting people who need us and we keep answering the bell. But when it comes down to it, we'll talk about it 
we'll click the like button we'll even share it but when it comes down to saying we've got to invest in it we won't do it can't win like that you can't win like that you can't win where your enemy without a second guess goes to the mat and puts that number one is they have more paper to put but still they're putting that kind of money on one dude who has no freaking impact on anything major in this country he simply was a dude on the train decided to kill another dude but what it represents in their psychology as it pertains to us they won't take that loss if they have to, if they can if they can do anything about it. They are willing to come together, create a situation where they rally around this guy who now is going to become famous, come out and do some kind of special and end up with some kind of celebrity and do like Zimmerman and so many other people literally build a livelihood off of killing a black man and they're financing it. And we can't even support programs that are giving our children a chance to stand up against this bull crap their own code we're not their own code i watched someone i hold in high regard talk about this for as as long definitely for for my adult life uh and long before looking and researching him and going to come and understand long before that dr claude anderson been telling us we're not on code. So this isn't Doc, Dr. Rick bitching and whining because he can't get support. This is just par for the course. Umar Johnson has been telling us we're not on code. Dr. Naeem Akbar has been telling us we're not on code. Dr. Khaled Muhammad told us we weren't on code. Dr. Francis Cress Wilson told us we weren't on code. This has been part of the course. We get so enamored by what they have, we want that. We want to be accepted. We want to drive what they drive. We want to do all that. We invest in all the wrong things. And we never invest in the things that build power. We never invest in the things that uh, offer us a sense of relief, uh, a sense of freedom. Uh, we talk about it. We talk about it. And some of us can talk about it so uh, intellectually uh, so elaborately and we can make it sound good we can make it look good but the thing is we aren't practicing it they're showing you what it looks like this is totally on you can't tell me they're doing it because they know him they don't know him you can't tell me they're doing it because this is about principles nobody is sitting up thinking it's okay to choke somebody to death now, there is this media propaganda narrative that makes the black man the boogeyman. So, yeah, he killed the boogeyman, but still, $1 million, that's being on code. Even when they don't even know the code, they're on code. It's just what they do, and they rally to it. They're saving this white killer from the black boogeyman and he doesn't even exist we don't have no power we didn't create this he's the he got pulled into a political thing that has nothing to do with us we're just the the the, the linchpin that's allowing the political jargonauts to go at one another if they actually cared about us our situation would have improved a long time ago our situation would have would have improved when daniel patrick man money uh Han uh, wrote uh, The Negro Family, A Case for National Action in 1965, which would become affectionately known as the Monahan Report, when he set up and told them what needed to be done to give blacks the right proper footing uh, to save the black family, uh, if, the, if they really cared about it. Because, see, he wrote that report and gave that to a Democratic president and uh, administration. So it's obvious that we are just simply a linchpin, something that uh, is used to create uh, friction and, 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 and force, but we don't benefit from it. They do. We get excited when our candidate wins, but we don't win. They do. What are we getting in return? When will we ever learn that our vote loses all of this value that we keep fighting and saying and talking about how valuable it is? It loses it all when we give it away and we get nothing in return for it. 
something is only a value based off of what you get for it. We have consistently gave it away and got nothing in return, nothing of intrinsic value, nothing that we can measure, nothing that we can sit down and say we've progress. We are worse now than we were 60 years ago in home ownership. Uh, at, at best, equal, no growth. We are still at the bottom rung of the socioeconomic ladder. The wealth gap is widening. Educational access is horrific and in getting worse. Incarceration rates are still high. Recidivism rates are still high uh, as it pertains to blacks. But we think we winning because they won. When are we going to stop falling for the okie doke? When are we going to stop falling for what they uh, are throwing at us and start actually putting energy, effort, time into understanding our dilemma? I keep telling you we lose because we don't understand how things work. We, we will be mean and hard and attack the very ones who are fighting. I've seen it so often. I've had people come to me, why are you even doing it? There are people who basically understand the numbers. The numbers say that our people aren't going to get it. The, the history coupled with what we're seeing and trends and numbers saying we're nowhere close to changing or shifting. And so people say, well, man, go out, do you get yours. You, you, you can just you're going to blow up the moment you put this stuff down. The problem is I have a bigger responsibility. My life is about more than me. And there's something that I have to stand on. Uh, Dr. King said uh, something that I live on every day. If a man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. If everything I do is based on my comfort, taking the easy route, doing what's best only for me, then I've become the very thing I despise. So I wake up every day and I fight for people who can't even appreciate the work I do. So this, my work isn't dependent upon whether you ever say, I got you, Doc, or support it or give. Again, Nisi Phillips, I want to thank you. Um, I'm not going to put your business in the street about what you gave, but I, I thank you for your sacrifice. Um, but I'm going to challenge everyone to get on code. We need to get on code. Um, we need to learn how to get behind one another. And I mean consistently. And it just isn't me. I'm one person. I'm one organization. Um, probably the second largest think tank in the U.S. Um, look, go to the site and check out the work we've done. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, go to the site, check it out. The link is in the description box. Check out the work we've done. Look at the blueprint for black empowerment. Look at the black code of conduct. Look at black men lead. Look at the music is life program for young black youth. Look at the damn near thousand articles that I've written just on that topic in there. Then there are another 5,000 videos of information that literally can be dissected and used. There is just, and that's just in this space. That, that doesn't count the personal stuff I do one-on-one -on -one for families when they come to me. That doesn't count me constantly doing research. I'm at 80,000 hours of research just in the black engagement, uh, the black enigma, the black problem um, area. 80,000. That doesn't count all the other stuff I got going. That tells you my life has just been about busting my ass to be better and help other people be better. And a great deal of that is aimed directly at the people I hold dearest, my people. But we ain't on code. We're not on code. We're not even close to being on code. I'm looking and I'm going like, and somebody else that I hold in high regard hit me up and they were, they were, more than flustered um and and i'll go ahead and say it, tony Lindsay, uh filmmaker tony Lindsay. uh we've had him on uh the teachers and uh the guy is very resourceful he's got a lot going on he, he's done some great stuff and he's doing some great stuff 
and, and he has an unbelievably brilliant mind, uh, he's going to be a valuable resource if we don't burn him out. And I think he's smart enough not to be burnt out. Uh, but we definitely need to be uh, aware of that. But he sent it to me, and I'm like, oh, heck no. So that um, is just, I'm, I'm, and I'm just looking, it's just like their own code. And the first thing that popped in my, my mind was Darren Wilson and how he literally was able to just sit up and move on with his life, seeded by over a million dollars raised for killing Mike Brown. I also watch how we got bamboozled. Uh, we lost um, Darren Seals based on the bull crap that was going on there and how we were misled and how he was trying to expose Black Lives Matter. They grifted us for 100 mil. Minimal. That's unaccounted for million dollar houses bought and I don't have a problem with a person getting paid for doing work that's not my thing but where's the money as it pertains to putting it into programs and putting it into uh, resources for young black males it's not there it never was there again this isn't new to me I've been doing this for a long time I've got the trail to prove it so yeah, we're not on code. That just like solidifies just how off code we are and far we are away from the things we say we want. On that note, look, I'm gonna get out for here. If you believe in the work I do, if you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, click the link, give to our cash app, or however you wanna do it, there's a, Two links in there and the Cash App, the organization's Cash App uh, account. Give, 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 give. There's so much. There's a there's a kid that needs support. There are people out there with mental health, and I'm telling you, we've got young black males, well under the age of 18, struggling with suicidal ideations. I'm working with them. There are many I can't work with because we simply don't have the resources. Suicidal ideations under 18. I've dealt with a few families who've lost their children to suicide. I've been talking to you about this. We got, a is we got issues going on, and we're just running around like we're winning in the world when we're getting our ass kicked. In every statistical category, we're getting our ass kicked. We're not winning at nothing but pretending we're winning. We've mastered that. We've got that down to a science. But we don't understand the importance of investing in the future. We don't get it. We're too busy trying to live right now. And that's something that we brought out of slavery. We're living it right now. We're getting it while we can. And we're not building anything, laying any foundation. And so we're fighting the same battles every year because we didn't build a solution. We just keep fighting the same battles over and over and over again. And then when the solution is there, we don't want to invest in it. We don't want to take the time to work it out, to build it out, to establish it. That's too much work. Can't see the end. I, I'm going to say this and then I'll be done. For the longest, if you go back, you're going to look and you're going to hear it. have heard me say this I don't know how many times. Until we have men, and I'm saying men because I believe men are the foundation. We set the standard. We set uh, the environment, the attitude, and everything else about what our people would do. Until we have men who are willing to invest and plant seeds, that we may not live long enough to see come to fruition, we'll never win. Everybody's looking for the pat on the back, the recognition, the immediate results, the band-aids. And so we're not building anything. It's going to take men who are sitting up saying, I'm going to pour into this kid who's four or five years old. They probably won't truly come into themselves for another 25, 30 years. I might not be here, but I planted the seed. See, until we get to that, you don't know what that feels like to pour off into something and trust that your seed is going to bear out in a way that creates a world that you may not live to see. Everybody doesn't have the vision. And because that 
we are dying in our own mess. I'm going to keep planting those seeds. Whether you sow a seed into me or not, I'm going to keep planting those seeds because my children are going to, my children's children are going to grow up in that. Their children are going to grow up in that. Other black kids with gifts and promise are going to grow up in that mess. I'm going to do everything I can to get as much of it out of their way as I possibly can. With or without your support. But what they're doing for Daniel Penny in 48 hours isn't uh, simply a reflection of where they are and how they view us. It's a reflection on where we are and how we view ourselves. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys take care. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.